Nothing can outweigh the name of Allah. Not here, not on the Day of Judgment, nowhere. The purpose of this world is La ilaha illallah. And the more that we depart from living by that with our deeds of righteousness as a people, as humanity, the less time the world has. So when you get to this point where corruption is rampant and people no longer have any conscience and they don't even say the name of Allah anymore, at that point, the world no longer has a purpose to exist and that's when it perishes. And that's one of the meanings of what the Prophet Wasallam said, أَصْدَقُ بَيْتٍ قَالَتُهُ الشُعْرَى أَلَا كُلُّ شَيْءٍ مَا خَلَى اللَّهَ بَاطِلُ The most truthful of words that a poet has spoken. Everything but Allah is perishing. One advice I give to someone, especially someone who is struggling with their faith, do not take La ilaha illallah for granted. Faith in its nature is always going to be up and down. It increases and it decreases. Even some of the companions complained to the Prophet ﷺ about not being able to maintain the same level of faith everywhere that they were. But towards the end of times, the Prophet ﷺ said that when people wake up, they may wake up as believers and go to sleep as disbelievers, or they go to sleep as believers and then they wake up as disbelievers. So the time in which a person sways between absolute belief and absolute unbelief is literally a day and night. And you really can't take the testimony of faith, La ilaha illallah, for granted. Now, La ilaha illallah is not only proven by the deeds that you do, it's also protected by them. The more that you act on La ilaha illallah, the less likely it is to leave your heart, especially when you need it most at the time of death. How valuable is it for you to show up on the Day of Judgment saying La ilaha illallah? The Prophet Wasallam said, whoever says La ilaha illallah sincerely from his heart, dakhla jannah He will certainly enter paradise at some point. And in one narration, the Prophet Wasallam said, Haram Allahu alayhi nar. Allah has forbidden the fire from that person. But no one can say La ilaha illallah sincerely without sincerely at least trying to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's the deeds that follow that confirm the sincerity of the statement that precedes all good. Now we've already covered the value of tasbih and tahmeed, saying subhanallah and saying alhamdulillah on the mizan. And Hafid ibn Rajab rahimullah has this beautiful tie-in between those phrases and this phrase of la ilaha illallah. He says, as for every ni'mah, every blessing, you pay for it by saying and living alhamdulillah. All praise and thanks are due to Allah. He says, as for Jannah, you pay for it by saying and living La ilaha illallah. And that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Afdalu dhikr, La ilaha illallah wa afdalu dua, alhamdulillah. The best form of dhikr, the best form of remembrance is La ilaha illallah. There is no God worthy of worship except Allah. And the best form of dua, of supplication, is Alhamdulillah, is when you say all praises and thanks are due to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So the scales are set up on the day of resurrection. And the Prophet Sallallahu says that a man is brought forth and he's placed on one side and everything that was recorded against him is placed on the other side. And then that scale tips against him. And it is said, Alqihi fin nar, send him to the fire. And just as he's about to be taken out of the scale and cast into the fire, he turns back and a voice cries out from the presence of the Most Merciful, saying, La ta'ajal, do not hasten. There's still something left for him. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to him directly, Hal tunkiru min hadha shay'a? Do you deny any of this? Any of these sins that are sinking you? Do you deny them? And he will say, La ya Rabb, no, O oh my Lord. Allah would say, did my angels record anything incorrectly? Have they been unjust to you? And he would say, no, O oh Allah, they've been just. Then he will say, apart from that, do you have any good deeds to hold with you, to hold your weight on this day? And the man will be terrified and he'll say, no, oh my Lord. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will respond and say, inna laka indana hasanat wa innahu la dhulma alayka al-yawm. That indeed you have some good deeds with us and you will not be treated unjustly today. And so this bitaqa, this card is brought out. And on this card is written, 
أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد عبده ورسوله. It's just the shahada. And he will say, Oh Allah, what is this card compared with all of these scrolls, these records of sin that are placed on the other side of the scale and tipping me towards hellfire? And Allah will respond and say, إِنَّكَ لَا تُظْلَمْ You will not be treated unjustly. And so the scrolls are placed on one side and Allah takes that card with the shahada and places it on the other side. And the Prophet ﷺ said that your scrolls of sins will go flying into the air. And that card of La ilaha illallah will weigh the right side all the way down. See now the value of La ilaha illallah. No matter what happens, don't lose that card. Low faith is not the same as no faith. And shaitan will try to convince you to tear that card up because you're feeling low. Hold on to La ilaha illallah even when you are struggling to live by it. And what does it mean when Allah says, إِنَّكَ لَا تُضْرَمْ You're not going to be wronged. Especially that this action of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save this person on that day, not only is it far away from injustice, it is a mercy that is entirely unexpected. That one card does away with all of your records of sin. But again, remember, إِنَّكَ لَا تُضْرَمْ You will not be wronged. And you have to then remember as we get into the scariest part of the Day of Judgment. You know, in regards to those that fail on that day, it wasn't Allah that wronged them, but it was they who wronged themselves by turning away from such a forgiving Lord. <laughs> فهو في عيشة راضية